If you've been playing Minecraft for a while, or if you, like, w went to elementary school, you probably recognize these books. I remember these were always checked out at the school's library, if it even had any copies at all. I've personally been playing Minecraft for a long time, but I'm just not the best at PvP. If you didn't already know, PvP stands for Player vs. Player, or just uh, fighting people. You're probably used to playing Hypixel Bed Wars, Sky Wars, maybe even duels if you're sweaty enough. Now, since I'm not the best Minecraft player, I would still like to expand my PvP skills. So that's why I recently decided to borrow the official Minecraft Combat Handbook from a friend of mine. Thanks, Jack. To the modern Minecraft PvP master, this book might not be the most reliable way of improvement. After all, this book was written in 2013, and covers a lot of things that PvP communities like Hypixel would never use nowadays. Like, for all you non-combo duels players out there, do you use two or more swords on a regular basis? That's just a taste of the spectacular, super helpful tips and tricks we will be learning today from the official Minecraft Combat Handbook. To show off the skills we will learn from this book, me and my friend Plushy will be making bases and then raiding the other person's base to see who's the best at fighting. Also, I was looking at my statistics yesterday, and it said that 0% of the people that watch my videos are subscribed to my channel. So if you could spare a minute, uh, that would actually mean a lot if you could just subscribe. We're on our way to 5,000, um, and if you're already subscribed, I thank you a lot for that. When you first open the Combat Handbook, you'll see a table of contents, just like any other book. After a brief look over of this page, you'll notice there's quite a lot of topics. Everything from potions and mobs to exploding tree trap. I think I'll start from the beginning, as I'm hoping to get the most information as possible from the book. The first page seems to be at swords and other basic weapons. Keep in mind that the copy of this book was released before the 1.9 update, so it won't be covering things like axes or shields or any of that. We'll actually be doing this video in the 1.7 version, just for your guys' information. This page of course recommends a diamond sword, but did you know that golden swords are the easiest to enchant? I tested this theory out myself, and I did indeed get much better enchantments than I did on other swords I tested. The book also suggests putting a cool name on my sword, so that's exactly what I'll be doing. This section of the handbook also talks about projectiles and ranged weapons, like bows and dispensers. I don't think I'll be using dispensers much, but I mean they might come in handy when I'm making my fort later in the video. This chapter also talks about flint and steel, lava, TNT. Just like dispensers, I think I'll be saving the explosives for the end of the video. But I definitely will be using the two forms of fire, as I've learned from all my practice in UHC duels that these definitely come in handy. And if you know me, you know that I love burning things down in Minecraft. Yes, I'm mentally sane, why do you ask? Next we have armor. The book of course suggests diamond armor, as diamond is the strongest material in the game. In fact, it says here that it's a good idea to keep a spare set of armor in your inventory, so that you can switch to it if your main set breaks. If you've ever played 2B2T, or the monstrosity that is combo duels, you've probably already utilized this strategy plenty, but personally I haven't, so I definitely will be trying that out. After the armor, comes a section about the nether. The nether has always been pretty much the most dangerous and risky place in Minecraft, with its lava pools and crazy abstract terrain. This section of the book explains how to get to the dimension, and how to successfully kill each of its mobs. The part of this section that stood out to me the most was the excerpt on ghasts. Usually, people use a bow to fire at the ghast, or they reflect one of its fireballs back at it, ultimately killing the flying beast. But the handbook actually suggests using a fishing rod to latch onto the ghast and pull it towards you, then hitting it with your sword to kill it. This section doesn't even mention bows, aside from a little icon in the suggested gear bit. But, whatever, I guess you don't need a bow, because this move with the fishing rod does work, it's just not very efficient. Alright, my turn. So the book shows a couple pages about the two bosses in 1.7 at the time, the Wither and the Ender Dragon. Obviously, the meta of killing the Wither and the Ender Dragon have changed, 
like killing the ender dragon with beds, kind of how the popular green man dream does it. With that all being said, I want to take a look on how Mojang back then would want you to kill these bosses. I'm going to be skipping the wither because most people don't even bother with it, and there's not much to be learned from the book about the wither. This leaves us with the greatest boss in the final challenge of Minecraft, the ender dragon. Once again, the game changed over time. A lot. So Mojang's way of defeating the Ender Dragon, the most efficient way, has most likely changed over the years. So it's going to be very different from how the, all the sweaty speedrunner guys do it nowadays. The book, of course, suggests bringing full enchanted diamond armor, as well as snowballs or eggs to explode the crystal, which is actually pretty normal. It also recommends straight up shooting the dragon with arrows. Now that we had read the section on the Ender Dragon, me and Plushy were ready to finally fight the boss and beat Minecraft together. Okay, we're here, we're here in the end, we're doing the dragon fight already. I know this game is a bit of a surprise, but oh wow, this is a really weird layout. It's in like different locations. Look how tall the pillars are. I know, this is really bizarre. I think with bows though, this won't be too bad. Usually nowadays people would use beds, but it doesn't really recommend that, so we're just gonna do it old fashioned. Dude, there's so many pillars though. Oh, I got knocked oh, off. Yeah. Oh, I died. It looks like its actions are a lot less predictable. Did you get all the crystals? Yeah. So we're gonna have to shoot it. Yikes. Oh, it's I coming think around. It's, it's coming behind oh. you, behind you. Like, I'm, I'm missing it. all of my shots. I shot it. Oh, that deals absolutely no damage. Oh, I hit it. That was a good shot. Double teaming this isn't that hard, honestly. This is taking way longer than it should have, honestly. Okay, we're dealing some good damage now. Uh, Do we have oh, to... Okay. Oh, now turn around, turn around. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> that was so awesome. Ah, I, I, I landed down with you. It's not... I wouldn't, not, I wouldn't say that's oh. hard, but definitely... I, I, I wouldn't... I wouldn't- I wouldn't say that's more hard, but I definitely would say it's more tedious. Yeah. Yes! I Who got it! No, you didn't! That was me! Yes, I so did. Wait, so what happens when you complete it? Like, oh, XP! Oh, there's the portal. Oh. <laughs> L. I'm gonna get like 100 levels. Wait, actually? I'm at level 70. I got 72 levels, and... We beat Minecraft, but not really. We kind of just did the dragon fight. Now that we've learned our fair share of combat skills from the handbook, me and Plushy are going to get to building our own bases and then raiding the other person's base to see who's learned the most. Okay, so this is my base for the base duels. I haven't seen plushies yet. Uh, he said he was going with like a nether theme, which should be interesting. Um, I built the TNT cannon like the book recommended. I don't know if it's actually gonna have any effect on anything because once I tested it, um, basically I tested when you press this button, which is the lowest range, basically the higher the button you get, the farther the TNT will shoot. This button just blows up the machine. Like it doesn't shoot far enough. It lands like here and blows up the machine and the base. So that's a that's an evil button i probably should just get rid of that one altogether if you press this button for example um it does launch the tnt but it launches it like there um, and unless he's in that specific spot it's not going to do much damage um or hit him at all and even if it is there he's going to have full diamond so i don't think that's going to have any effect but it is very good i've never played with tnt cannons now that i know about them i think honestly i would use tnt cannons because they're they're really cool like look at that i'd give that a thumbs up i think those have a lot of good potential in this like land here um i don't think they're gonna do anything but i do think they're cool now that i've messed with them so you might see through my my windows here that i have a little back entrance there but for the main entrance he'll be coming up um, he'll, obviously he'll be coming up this uh, soul stand, which isn't going to have much of, of an effect. I just thought it looked cool. But this, uh, I think, might actually kill him. Like, I'd be surprised if we didn't know about it, because it is in the book, and we were both reading the same book. But this, I think, could have an effect. So look what happens when you walk through the pressure plate at the door. Oh, well, that... Okay, look what happens when you walk through the door here. You fall down and into the lava. And hopefully you die. I might actually change it a bit. I might make it so it just drops you all the way to the bottom. We will have water, so we might be able to MLG it, but I don't think he'll have that good of reflexes. It'll probably come to him as a surprise if he actually falls for it, uh, but I guess we'll have to see. 
Now, we'll be going through the back entrance for personal use because, like, we don't want to have to deal with that and reset the machine. So once you're in the base, there's really not too much here to be shown, um, except for right here. Basically another failed machine like the TNT cannon, um, but it was recommended in the book, so I wanted to try it. Um, this would only work good if it was flat ground and if you timed it perfectly, because if you see when I press this button, it shoots the potions out, but they land at the bottom of the hill. Um, so I'd have to see him at the bottom of the hill to trigger this. Um, I'm guessing this would be better if you have, like, a horde of, like, enemies coming up, but obviously it's just, like, solo, so... Yeah, thanks, Plushy. If we come up here, this is, like, this roof. This might be good for shooting a bow. I think that could be beneficial. I guess we'll just have to see, though, because a lot of it will rely on what Plushy does when he raids my base. Okay, so I see him over there. He he's looking at me. Now he's shooting at me. That's not really cool. Dude, the water buckets still are, are so weird. It's, it's nice going back in time, but geez, these are weird. Oh, whoa, yo, chill. Dude, he sent those flying. Oh, hello. What's, what's up, Plushy? I think, I think my high ground might do it for me here. I realized that I, I triggered those potions way too late. Dude, those the water buckets are so scuffed in this version. Like, usually when I'm on SMP weekly. Oh, oh, I, I landed it, I landed it. I'm gonna die, but... With water, you landed it? Yeah. Yeah, you're going bye-bye, plushy. No, 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 wait. Line is, line is, line is, line is. Wait, wait, wait. Oh! Wait, wait I fell down. Yes! 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 No! Yes! I died! I lost to my own trap! Yes! Okay, so I'm raiding plushy space, uh, so I'm gonna ride up on my horse here. If you look at my inventory, I've got some potions here, so I'm gonna get kind of close and switch to my invisibility, which I think I want to do now, so... Alright, so I have my invisibility now. Um, I'm gonna have to take my armor off so he can't see me. Alright, so I'm headed in. His base is a lot smaller than mine. It doesn't actually look like there's any way for me to go in. I see him riding around in his horse. His horse... It looks like his horse is burning. Let's see if he notices me when I walk in. Okay, well, I, I can't say I didn't expect that, to be fair. Hello, Linus. Oh no, oh no. Plushy, Plushy, you're not... <laughs> you're gonna fall in the lava. I forgot that there's punch bows, which are so annoying. Tyrone! No! You can't do this, you can't do this. No, 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 no. No! <laughs> I didn't kill it, the fire did. You better apologize. No! Oh, there yes. I go. I think the lava, the lava did good for you there. I think, yeah, I think the, the lava, lava the, the lava like got the knockback did really good for me. Yeah, you you won probably because of the lava. Next, Plushy and I decided to just do a standard one v one duel in one point seven. So now we're doing the box fight. So basically, it's best out of three, and we respawn right here, but we won't be resetting our inventories. Um, okay, three, two, one, go. What is this? Bow spam is so OP. Dude, we're actually sweating so hard. No, no, blind is sweet. <laughs> yeah, okay, one for me, one for me. Okay, now we're going again. Boo! Yeah. How did you not- Oh, uh, I spawned beneath the thing. Last one. Wait, we both killed each other one time. But whoever wins this is just the best overall. Sure. Okay. Well, to be fair, you did kind of win at the base fights. Oh, wait. What are you doing? No! I'm the best overall! After this, we decided to get on Hypixel to see how the 1.7 skills we learned compared to how we normally play on 1.8. Alright, so we're on Hypixel now. We're gonna see if we've learned anything from the book, uh, PvP-wise. I definitely prefer the 1.7 bow. I feel like the 1.8 bow is definitely way more just bulkier. Well, it was a lot faster. It's more free. Also, with 1.7, uh, there's block hitting, and I feel like, I mean, block hitting's still a thing in 1.8, yeah, but, but it's just... very, very difficult and doesn't have the same effect. There is no rods in the 1.7 version, so you couldn't rod. Yeah, they, they completely don't work. I use rods a lot, personally. I think they can be 
definitely very helpful. In like 1.8 PvP, combos is what it's all about. I think we should be thankful for the water buckets we have now, because the 1.7 ones are actually, they suck so hard. Yeah. Also, I usually use a PvP pack, which it sounds stupid, but like, I feel like using a good texture pack can be very beneficial, even if it just is, you know, for looks and stuff.